fire up the webinar that everybody was uh, getting here for. And that's uh, integrating GL Studio uh, HMI content into uh, Mox VR Vantage uh, image generator. So thanks for uh, everyone that's hop hopping on here. So uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, the one core product is uh, that we're, uh, of integration is going to be the GL Studio Toolkit. Uh, it's one of uh, several products that uh, DISTI offers for producing human machine interface content, uh, and uh, the, 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 it's the GL Studio area that we're going to be be focusing on. Uh, the toolkit itself uh, is essentially a, a core uh, editing environment in which you can import a variety of different uh, uh, content items, whether it's photographs, uh, 3D models of content. If you've got custom open geo code already developed, you can bring that in as well. And within the, within the editing environment, you can integrate uh, not only how the device is supposed to look and operate, but the behavior code that dictates uh, how it's going to work. Uh, and when you're ready and can have uh, finished that uh, little implementation area, you then uh, generate human-readable either C++ code, Java code. Uh, we also have a uh, embedded safety-critical uh, C++ code generated with GL Studio as well uh, to produce what we're calling a reusable software object, or RSO. It's essentially um, a, a built-up uh, instrument or uh, element that you'll be able to place into your uh, your actual uh, training device or courseware or whatever you need to do. So the, the workflow that we're going to be looking at today is going to involve uh, generating C++ code uh, from GL Studio and then producing an RSO that's compiled as a DLL. And it's going to be inserted into uh, pretty much your, your uh, part test trainer or full, full mission trainer type of uh, type of area. That RSO can also feed back into the editing environment so you can build up very large and uh, complex designs. So let's uh, talk a little bit more about that, that RSO and, and, and what it entails. Uh, it, if you think about it, it's essentially a, a smart graphical element uh, that serves as a building block because uh, it encapsulates um, all of the information that uh, you need about that graphical element, the, uh, the properties are that, that are there that you can work with, that you can set or get. Um, and uh, the, the, the interface of, of how you're going to, uh, to work with it. And uh, you can use these to build up very large, complex designs. Uh, so you can use them in a wide variety of, uh, of different roles. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, how these RSOs are integrated into uh, the VR Vantage uh, environment. And uh, the next slide here, we're going to kind of break that down for you in, in the workflow a little bit. Uh, first off is uh, the first phase of, a, a, of creating an object within GL Studio is to kind of work out uh, how it's going to look, uh, the development of the, actual, the, the visual aspects uh, of the tool and the layout of the instrumentation, uh, you know, colors, shapes, sizes, and all that kind of thing. Uh, next is to go in and actually do your uh, code development for the uh, RSO, and that's where the right side comes in. This is where you're going to uh, instantiate all of your properties. Uh, for instance, a, uh, an altimeter would have uh, an altitude setting. Uh, an attitude directional indicator will have uh, settings for uh, pitch and roll. And as you can see, we built when you build up these properties that are going to describe this object. And as we're going to see in a little bit, Andy's going to access these properties within uh, the VR Vantage environment. So he's going to pick up uh, the pitch and roll properties and map them accordingly uh, to the VR Vantage um, uh, aspects and attributes that you, you have within that environment. Uh, next is to uh, actually do some testing of the object. You can uh, build this as, either as a, uh, as a standalone executable to make sure it's working how you want, uh, or you can uh, compile it as a component and it will become part of a DLL, or it will become a DLL that you can instantiate. And then you also have um, your uh, uh, root, uh, root class name that we'll be accessing as well. So in this case, uh, we're, we're, uh, we've developed an ECRUEL uh, 350 cockpit, and uh, that is going to be the uh, the root name that we're going to access uh, at runtime. So if you uh, just keep an eye out for that uh, in the later sections here, and then uh, last but not least, you take this uh, this this uh, DLL cockpit, and then you're able to integrate it this uh, this custom cockpit within the uh, the VR Vantage uh, space and get it working and flying around. So that uh, all kind of looks good on uh, paper. Uh, but uh, let's kind of show you live on how this is supposed to uh, to happen. So I'm going to pass 
the presentation over to uh, Andy. So I got a couple button clicks to do here. And we'll get this shifted over to Andy. So we'll be looking at his desktop where he's got uh, the environment running. And we should be good to go. So feel free to uh, a, uh, you know, ask any questions uh, as we go along. And uh, we've got our panelists here. So hopefully we can get uh, everybody up to speed on, on how this is all working. All yours, Andy. All right, thank you, Scott. So we've already switched over to my screen. And the first thing we're going to see is I have a few windows up here. Uh, on the top, uh, spanning a little over half the screen, you'll actually see the VR Vantage uh, IG. <clears throat> this is where all of our uh, visual stuff is going to be taking place, obviously. Um, in the lower right-hand corner here, I have the mock data, uh, data logger. Uh, what we have here is a, a pre-recorded scenario that's already played out. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and hit the play button, and we're going to go ahead and start seeing that uh, we're going to have a small group of Apaches, uh, one from the top of the screen and then one from off to the left, are going to start attacking this village. <coughs> So uh, what we're going to do is actually take a look at these. Uh, we start seeing some of our uh, amphibious aircraft or our amphibious vehicles. We see some aircraft coming in. I'm going to go ahead and attach to one of these. And the first thing I want to show you is that we already have actually a few pre-shipped RSOs available to you inside of uh, Mock VR Vantage. So I'm going to attach a Mimic camera to one of our cockpits. And we're going to see here in uh, just a few minutes, we're actually going to go ahead and uh, load up. Let's go ahead and set this correctly. <clears throat> go to our heads-up display. We're going to go ahead and set this to be a rotary wing HUD here in just a moment. Um, what we have here is, uh, by default, we actually have five uh, pre-built pre, uh, um, GL Studio cockpits that we've made available to uh, our, um, di our different, uh, different types of cockpits made available to you inside VR Vantage already. Um, they span a number of different things. In this case, we have a uh, a, a HUD setup for our track vehicles. We can actually see them uh, running through their scenario as they approach their village. Um, we're going to go ahead and show you here how we're going to take that rotary wing aircraft that we looked at just a second ago. And we're actually going to go ahead and go ahead and uh, take the, it's an Apache model, but we're going to go ahead and include the uh, Equity L350 inside there and actually have that drive the uh, heads-up display. So the first thing we need to do is actually tell, <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and pause our simulation right here. We'll go ahead and attach a uh, follow over here so we can actually take a look at our cockpit or take a look at our model. The first thing we're going to need, going to, need to do is actually define a uh, model definition for this file <coughs> or for this object. Uh, the other thing we're going to need to do is actually give it our heads up display. What I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and look at <coughs> a new window. We have our HUDs window here. <coughs> This uh, location right here, mock of uh, VR Vantage data HUDs, this is by default where your GL Studio RSOs will need to be stored uh, for any uh, GL Studio created interfaces, cockpits, or HUDs. So we're going to go ahead and we're drag in our uh, already created uh, XVL350 into this folder. <clears throat> so now that we've placed that, uh, VR Vantage will know where to find it at runtime. The next thing we need to do is actually create a model definition for it. Uh, the model definition is going to go ahead and uh, pretty much state exactly how that uh, particular RSO will behave inside of VR Vantage. So inside of model definitions, we actually have uh, model definitions for several different objects. Um, any kind of entity, uh, DI guy characters, decals, and effects, everything has its own uh, model definitions with different uh, types of parameters that can be used to influence them. So we're going to go ahead in here, and we're going to create our first one. <coughs> and we'll just call this the Ecridiel Cockpit. <clears throat> it is the uh, going to be a head-up display type, and I always spell that wrong. So we'll go ahead and add that in, and we see that we've got a new window up here uh, saying we're missing some required parameters. So we'll go ahead and go through and take just a couple of minutes, and we'll talk about the uh, different parameters and what they need to be uh, set with. The first one is file name. Um, that's a simple one. That's just going to be the uh, name of the file. In this case, uh, Eckley L350 underscore L1. Uh, notice we do not need the extension DLL. Uh, Mox VR Vantage will pick up whether or not it's a DLL or if we're in Linux, it would be a shared object. So we'll go ahead and pick up the extension and load it for you. Uh, the next thing we need is the RSO name. Uh, the RSO name is actually the class name associated with this uh, particular object. By default, we typically use the name of the cockpit or the name of the um, RSO, and then we append the word class at the end. So this is what our RSO name would be by default. Going further down, we have our perspective. Perspective, of course, can be either 2D or 3D. 
Um, the XREL we created is a 2D cockpit, so we'll go ahead and set 2D for this. Moving on, we have our perspective width and our perspective height. These values are going to go ahead and be the width and the height that we use to create this object. In this case, this particular RSO has a width of 1435 and a height of 900, so I'll go ahead and pass those in now. <clears throat> the uh, last thing we need is a channel keyword. Now inside VR Vantage, you have different channels, and any uh, the keyword specified in here will go ahead and let each channel know whether or not it's supposed to display a cockpit or a heads-up display. Uh, by default, every channel has a keyword that's predefined by VR Vantage called Show HUDs. We'll go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and leave our channels alone, but we'll go ahead and specify a cockpit channel keyword for when you actually go into development, and we say, okay, well, we want our HUD to only appear on any channel which has the channel keyword of cockpit. So that's all VR Vantage actually needs to display the RSO. However, we're going to go ahead and add a few other things. These things are called attributes. Now the attributes match up one-to-one -one with the GL Studio properties that Scott was talking about earlier. In this case, we'll go ahead and add a few so that we can actually see the updates inside of VR Vantage when we go to actually run the scenario again. We have our pitch. We have our roll. <coughs> we're going to go ahead and add in a few others. We'll have uh, one for airspeed. Go ahead and tack on knee there. We need altitude. <coughs> and then the last one we'll have is heading. Altitude. Now the question would be, where do we actually get these values? Like what are we actually going to populate in here? I'm going to go ahead and show a quick table. Uh, by default, we're going to be using uh, what Mach calls attribute updaters. Uh, these attribute updaters will take in data straight from the simulation, and then we can go ahead and populate those parameters with these values. Now what I have here is just a list of the default attribute updaters that VR Vantage provides. Um, however, through the use of plugins, we can actually expand this list, so you can include other different items in here. Um, by default, we have uh, our altitude, we have a couple of ways to represent speed, our pitch, roll, yaw, um, a toggle for whether or not we're showing our headlights, and our angle of attack. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and move this back over. We're going to go ahead and populate these values with some of the things we had inside the uh, attribute updaters list. The first one will go knots per hour for the airspeed. For the altitude, we will go ahead and specify uh, feet above ground level. And then heading, pitch, and roll will simply be yaw for the heading. Pitch. And roll. So now that we've done this, I'll go ahead and close out, <coughs> save this particular uh, model definition. We'll close out of the uh, application settings. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at this object. The next thing we're going to have to do is actually find out what kind of model this is so that we can associate our heads of display with this object. Inside of visual map, or inside of um, visual mappings, we'll go to a head of displays. And this is where we're actually going to define it. But first, we need to find out exactly what this uh, object is. If I simply go to settings and turn on entity labels, <clears throat> I'll just hover over my aircraft. What we see there is a small field, the third one down, called type. The type is what's actually used to define the entity itself. Um, this entity has a type of 1, 2, 225, 20, 1, and then two wildcards, 0, 0. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is actually create a new entity type in my HUD mappings to actually include our XDL cockpit into our... Uh, in this case, our Apache. So to do that, we go over here, we're going to add. We're going to specify our entity type again. So 1, 2, 225, 20, 1. And then we have our wild cards, which in this field will be negative 1, negative 1. We're going to associate a model definition for the Equial cockpit and click OK. <coughs> so we close. And now we should, if we actually attach a mimic, We'll actually load up the Ecreal RSO, and we can actually see it inside our simulation. Now, the one thing we haven't seen yet is actually seeing it update its data with, uh, or update uh, our display data with some uh, real-time information from the simulation. So what I'm going to do is actually start the simulation over again. <clears throat> we're going to hit play, and we're going to go ahead and find any one of our Apaches as soon as they come into play here. If we go ahead and attach a mimic to this Apache. <clears throat> this one right now is on a straight line path and it's starting to move. What we can see here is the uh, pitch and the roll. 
are taking to effect here. We're pitching down a little bit. Uh, the altitude display, right now we're kind of hovering at about the same display, or the uh, same altitude. And has this, uh, vehicle, or has this uh, aircraft moves to engage the uh, palace over on the right side of the screen, we'll see our heading start to update. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and leave this uh, running for just a moment. Uh, I want to go ahead and remind everyone, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to use the uh, questions interface on your GoToMeeting uh, on your GoToMeeting page. And feel free to ask us any questions. Um, in the meantime, I will go ahead and turn this uh, over, back over to Scott Ariati so we can go ahead and uh, wrap up our presentation for you today. Scott, it is all yours. Thanks. Oh, are we unmuted yet? Yeah, there we go. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> Took a second for this thing to unmute here. Um, let me switch back over and make sure everybody's seeing the the last but not least screen here. So uh, that concludes uh, for today what we wanted to cover on how to uh, integrate the uh, custom-built GL Studio RSOs into uh, the VR Vantage image generator. Uh, as you can see, it was actually a fairly simple thing to do. So uh, feel free to uh, keep uh, any of those questions coming here. If uh, you do have to uh, leave us here now, feel free to uh, hit that exit survey on the way out and let us know uh, how we were doing today and what, ov what other information we can get for you. Uh, if you're curious about uh, a little bit more on, uh, on things here, we have a, um, a VR Vantage uh, product page set up on disti.com and how the integration uh, is working there. So feel free to swing by disti.com and under the product section, uh, and third-party products, you'll see uh, VR Vantage integration. So we will be, uh, um, uh, this, this page is live now, and if you want any of the uh, uh, information that we had here today, uh, written copy of the, uh, of the tutorial, uh, or the, uh, uh, the, the recording of this uh, webinar, feel free to uh, swing by here and request it. Uh, you also have a link here to get to the uh, VR Vantage page, so you can learn more about the uh, VR Vantage uh, toolkit as well, and you can get that going. So uh, let's swing back over here. Uh, we have a, an e-newsletter. I'm sure most of you folks are getting that. If um, that'll kind of keep you up to date with the latest happenings with the uh, the GL Studio products, uh, so keep a, an eye out for those coming across your uh, your desktop. And then uh, also on uh, DC.com, we have a section for webinars, and we're uh, constantly doing uh, new webinars of this fashion. Uh, we have a monthly tech tip webinar where uh, folks can watch and see uh, some of the latest things that uh, our support guys are, are helping folks out with and, and uh, broadcast it out to the larger audience. Um, talk about the uh, data director for uh, managing simulation uh, data as well and a new animated schematics toolkit that we're coming up with for GL Studio, and a lot more things. So uh, definitely stay tuned for, for that information. If uh, I'll uh, let the, the panelists uh, kind of hop on here now for uh, answering any additional questions that might have uh, come across while I haven't been looking. And uh, if there's uh, anything else we can help you out with, please let us know. And for, if you do have to leave us at this point, uh, definitely fill out that survey at the end and, uh, and, and stay tuned for, uh, for what's happening next. Thanks a lot, everybody.